Uh, can you see my screen now? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, that's good. Okay, that's good. So hello everyone, and uh, thanks for making this happen. And uh, like, like today, I, 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 I want to talk about making and repairing medical devices. And I and there's a case study that happened in Syria, and uh, it is like it's a project that I I worked with Susan Long uh, uh, when we were working in, in field ready, and she's she's in the meeting by the way. Uh, so why 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 I'm going to talk about making and repairing medical devices? Uh, so so usually medical devices the demand of medical devices happen happens in large quantities or in complex devices. And in, in many cases, or let's say in, in, in a perfect situation, it's, it will be perfect that we can do everything, but uh, that's not the case when we are working on the ground. So uh, there's always some limitations in about the resources and limitations about the context, about the technology we are using. So at the end, we need to make, let's say, let's call it for now a short list of items that we are going to make or to repair uh, in, in a way that will fit our capabilities and our resources. So, uh, and this is by the way, something usually, or in many situations becomes an obstacle in the work because like usually engineers tend to select to do complex things and which is not always the correct thing to be done. Uh, so like today I'm going to present some a simple tool that we used in this project which happened in North Syria. And that project continued for two, two years. The goals or the outputs of the project was to repair at least 200 medical devices and to make at least 35 new critical health items. And like, as everyone knows that the situation in Syria at that time and still, it's a conflict zone, it's a war zone. So like uh, bombing happening all the time and the supply chain is almost completely broken. And so people there had to lean on their local capacity and lean and to work locally to make things happen. Uh, so let's move to the next slide. Yeah. So let's think let's think about it in this way. So like in in on the ground, uh, we have some details. We have data that we collected about the hospitals, the patients, the devices that are broken, the devices that are needed, and at the end we have a huge list of information. We had many many like hundreds and hundreds of devices that should be repaired and many, many devices that should be made and created from scratch, which are needed for the local community to, and for health, uh, and for health, uh, like, uh, like, like hospitals, clinics, and needed by them to support uh, the local community. But at, at, as I said, we cannot do everything. We had to go into some systematic approach that enables us to select what is more needed. And this is what we call the prioritization it's about selecting the most important and first and to put it on the first on the list to be done so the first thing that after like we have this huge row, row, row of data we had to select what we can do first and in fact this is really important because like uh it's it's like when we work in prioritization and we, when we think about selecting the devices, this is something can shift your project to, from failure to success. And if it's not done in the right way, it could shift your project from success to failure because we cannot do everything. We need to think about what is the most important and most needed. And then we have to think about making it first to serve the community. Uh, like prioritization is about creating criteria. It's about creating uh, the measures that we are going to use to select the items we are going to make or to repair. So think about it like we can think about it like if we have a, 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 
an example for our, our daily life. If you are going to buy a car, if you want to, if my criteria were to buy an SUV, then you will have thousands of options. If you had another criterion, like I want a black SUV, then we will have less options. If you, if you add another, like I, I want to have a Japanese made uh, SUV, which is black, then we have limited options and, and so on. So the more criteria you put into your like decision matrix, uh, the less options that you will have at the end to be done. Uh, I'm not going to, to, to go into the details about like those measures or cri criteria, but I'm going to focus on two basic things that I believe those two criteria should be in any decision matrix uh, for any project, yeah, in, in any project where things to sh should be uh, selected, let's say. We have two things, which is the impact, and it's a measure about how this solution or this product will affect people's life and the complexity, and it's a measure about how difficult it is to make or to repair this device or to or this solution. And we have four main like squares or parts uh, in the matrix. For example, if we think about uh, items that have a high impact and low complexity, then we, we, when we are talking about the quick wins, and this is the place where, where should we start? Because quick wins mean that those items will have a huge impact on people's life. And at the same time, it's really uh, simple to make or to repair those items. On the other hand, if we look on the opposite side for this part, if this item is really complex to be made or really complex to be repaired, and, and the impact of this item is not really high, then we should avoid this kind of uh, solutions because it will consume the, your, the, your resources and at the end, you will not, will not have enough relative impact compared to the resources you used to make or to repair this item. Uh, so like, this is how things look in real life. Uh, like after like putting all those measures impact and difficulty about diff different solutions, you will end up having this matrix, which which like give which gives an indication about where to start and what to avoid and what lies in middle between like making and not making. Uh, okay, this is something. And did it work? The answer is yes. So. This is like I'm going to show now some of the results that we achieved in achieved in, in this project in Syria. Uh, like we worked in 28 health facilities uh, where 93 percent of the broken items were repaired and worked in a stable way. Uh, we completed like uh, 215 repair. Uh, items, devices, and uh, like an average 20, 27 of them were used per day. And uh, we we delivered like 39 new items. And when, when I'm, I'm, I'm saying new items, it means that things that were created from scratch. Uh, for example, one of them was a major project, which is which was really complex and really impactful, which uh, was like a chiller for city machines, something that to to increase the usability of the city machines. And uh, this device were used in average about three to four hours uh, per day. And uh, uh, this is like some some statistics about the the, the results of the, the project and. Like I'm showing those statistics and results is to, to have an indication or to have an idea about like thinking about like those approaches about selecting items to be done and selecting items to be repaired is really successful at the end. It's, it's not something that uh, like theoretical, let's say it's something practical and uh, should be considered in any project. Uh, those, those are like large numbers. I'm not going to read that, but uh, it's like, aggregation of the data about like the, the users of the devices we, we, we created. And uh, this is something I would like to mention, uh, which uh, uh, 
uh, like thinking about the items we we made and we repaired, uh, we measured like eighty percent less cost compared to the alternatives. And when I'm saying alternatives, I'm saying about buying a new device or thinking about um, uh, importing the spare part from outside. So like after like measuring all those uh, costs, we we found that we reduced the cost of those items by eighty percent. Uh, so yeah, thank you. This was my presentation. Hopefully, it was useful. Yeah.